Hello guys, you're welcome to Structures Pro. If today is your first time, if you are just seeing my video for the first time, I will add, I will beg you to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and the like button as well. You you do that to support me. That is your own bid to you know give me so your support. Also put down a comment, you know, just put a positive comment down in the comment section. This is a, a home of software. I have already uploaded a lot of uh, start pro um, videos, tutorial videos, and uh, we are working on uh, starting a class or tutorial classes on Primavera. Primavera is a software for uh, planning, you know. Every industry in the country and the whole world needs planners. If you go to job search, search, search uh, uh, sites, um, you find out that planners are highly needed. They need planners here and there. And it doesn't matter the course you studied, if you even if you studied marketing or public administration, you can still learn and work as a planner. So I am going to start that course in this channel. So um, I urge you to stick around, subscribe, share this video with someone that you are recommending a particular course I'm teaching here so that they will follow me when I start. So um, that Primavera is not just for civil engineers like I just mentioned initially, so it's for everybody. And if you are planning to leave the country, leave your country for another country, is a course that is generally accepted. So if you don't want to go to another company, uh, sorry, another country and start doing many jobs, Primavera will help you to start doing a professional job when you travel. So it's a course that you have to actually learn, and I'm going to help you and guide you through that. Okay, so we started this course in our last class. We are this is currently. Um, um, a warehouse design we are designing. We started this uh, um, this course in this channel, and I told you that we are going to finish it here. So we are still doing the modeling. Yeah. So we modeled last time, and when we checked our model, we found out that uh, some certain things are not in order, which is normal. You know, when you do your model, you check and you, know, you do you remodel, you delete and you know, modify until you get what you want exactly. So um, if you look at uh, this polling on this other side, you see that uh, it does not, is not facing the same direction with the adjoining polling. This one is facing in, in an opposite direction to so this one. So we need to, we need to change that. We need to change that. Okay. And again, I, I, I told us last class that my column is not, uh, the orientation of my column is not what I want, so I need to rearrange this column you know, so that it can it will face. I want my the cantilever that will be supporting this this uh, um, runway to be connected to the flange of my column. So as it is now, it's being connected to the web. So and I don't want that. So I want it to be connected to the flange. So I'm going to rearrange the column. Okay, that's that. Then another thing we do in today's class is. Uh, we are going to do um, um, beam releases. We are going to release some movement forces on the pollens. Yes, we are going to do that. Then if there is still enough time, because I wouldn't like the video to be so long. If we have enough time, we will also do a member offset. So after that, we can, you know, we can stop there and continue in our next class. I'm going. I'm taking this bit by bit so that uh, my students will be able to follow up. So I believe that uh, as I'm modeling this. My students are also doing the same from their own end. Okay, stick to uh, stick to. Let's let's start the first operation, which is to uh, to rearrange this. I will first of all try the the beta angle. Yeah, I'll use the beta angle to see if I can change it. Of course, it will it's supposed to work. But let's also discuss the the cause of this. What actually happened? You know, so is it depends on how you I model the beam. So joining two nodes, when I joined this polling, I started from my left to my right. So that's why this one is facing there. And when I joined the cantilever one, I started from right to left. That's actually what changed the direction of this other one. So if you're adding your beams, make sure you follow the same pattern. If you're adding from right to left, maintain right to left so that the orientation will be okay, will be the same. So that's what happened here. So if you join from left to right and you come to this one and you join the right to left the two of them will not face the same direction so that was what happened so let's just dive into the solution and uh, solve it once and for all okay so i 
I'll go back to my geometry uh, specification. Sorry, then I'll check my um, I think it's properties. So I'll check my uh, data angle, create data angle in degrees. So let me do 90. By the time we apply it to one, we will now go and check what, what results we have gotten. So we have applied that. So it will repeat that number by 90 degrees. So now let me check again the three mode and see if that one is ready in order. Okay. So it's not in order, it's even the worst. So 90 degrees is not the best angle for it. So I need to change the angle, which I think is, uh, um, let me try 45. Let me try 45. Let me try 45 properties, beta angle, beta angle, try 45. If I try does not work. We'll try 80, 180. Okay. So let's check again. Okay. So 180 is not it. Sorry, 45 is not it. So I think it should be 180. So 180 will not disappoint us. Let's do 180. Let's do 180 beta beta angle. Sorry, edit this value. 180. That's 90 plus 90. 180. Good. So let's check again. Okay. So I want to be sure and what works. If I can now you know, do the same for others, so this is it. 180 is the correct thing, so it's now facing the same direction with the adjoining point. So I can now assign the same property to the rest of the polling number that is affected. Okay, so I'll highlight these, these other ones. And assign, assign this beta angle to, oh, sorry. I should have selected the angle first before the members. That's the error. Okay. So. You have to be sure you are not selecting another member. Okay, so assign. Okay, so let's confirm. Let's confirm from the uh, trading model to see what you have done. Okay. So that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. So that one is done already. So another one is this member that we didn't assign any property to. So um, we need to assign a polling member to it. Yeah, they will, yeah, during fabrication, they will flush this uh, rafter with this polling. This polling has to be on top of this rafter. That's where the rafter is going to end because I don't want the, the rafter to project here yeah, because I'm going to have a cladding this way. So the cladding might be halfway or complete cladding, but, but there will be a cladding, so I don't want my, my rafter to project. It depends on design requirements. If there will be a design where there will be need for you to extend the rafter and extend the roof or something. So but for this particular one, I'm not extending the rafter. So I will simply assign the pole lines for these two members at the extreme, such so that it will remain a pole line for me. So I will just go to properties. Assign to 
So this is this. Okay, another thing I can do is let me just leave it cut out. Let it be a point here. Okay. Let it be a point too. I will do this one as well. Okay, that was fine. Then the if the if uh, distance. Let me confirm what I have before. We have uh, from here to here. That's three hundred. So I will do the same thing. Select node. This node. This node and uh, this node. So they are going to negative x direction and 0 0.3. Okay, so so now this is where we are going to demonstrate that uh, um nothing I just explained a few minutes ago. Okay, when I was adding this pollen, I started from left to right. So the same thing is what I would do here: the left to right. Is if I do right to left. The two will not face the same direction, so it's going to have to be left to right. That's good. So I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. I'll select this node and this node, and I'll control C, control V, 0 0.3. That's fine. So that one does not have problem. Uh, left to right, left to right, it's very important. Okay, so I'll go to properties, uh, assign properties to that number, this one, mm, this one, and this one, yeah, assign. Okay, so this is this is it. So let me now go to the second the second aspect of it, which is uh, to reorient my column. Yeah, I want to reorient my column. So okay, so I'll go to properties again. Let me take it to geometry then properties. I'll click on the uh, uh, better angle. We should create another one. Let's check try 90 and see where what the odd 90 is going to do to us. And I'll assign it to to this one. Let me see what it will look like. Then we go to 3D view. Okay, so this is what this is what I want. If you look at this very clearly, you see the cantilever is now connected to the flange instead of web. So I'm going to assign the same thing to this one. So so what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do now is I'll select go to properties a better angle 90 and I will select all the beams parallel to Y. I mean, so every all the columns, sorry, and I was trying to select a beam. So in start with anyway, every member is a beam. So is when you are when you are doing design that you will tell the software, you know, using the design parameters which beam is column and which beam is beam. <laughs> yeah, we call it beam. They call every member beam in start to. So what you that is a, the engineer knows which one is your column. And which one is your beam? Okay, so this is it. So I have, uh, I have done that. 
Done with that. That's wonderful. So the next thing we are going to do now is we're going to do an offset. We're going to offset this uh, this our own beam so that it will, it will look like what we want. You know, so this beam now is supposed to be on top of this cantilever. Yeah, so it's supposed to be on top of this cantilever. Okay. So in case if you are struggling with all these things I'm doing the ops there, even this one I'm about to do the beam offset and the rest of them. I already have a course on Star Pro, which is very, very cheap. I subsidized it. So I'm going to try I have the link in this uh, this video in the in the, in the description uh, of this video. You'll find the link there to get the course. It's very cheap. Even when you click that link, it's definitely going to take you to a seller platform. That platform is a platform that you know helps us to sell our products online and deliver the money to us. So don't think that anybody is going to scam you to clicking off links. I'm not here to do such things. So don't be afraid of clicking such links. Or you can even chat me up on WhatsApp with my phone number. My phone number is also going to be added to this uh, to the description. So you always chat me up on, on, on WhatsApp and we discuss about that and discuss about the mode of payment, the one that you prefer. If you want to pay my account directly, this is as allowed. Or if you want to pay online, it's still allowed. So the course covers both complete and still design. So they, everything you need to know about that. So don't be confused. And it's very cheap, it's very affordable. I reduced the price because of some students, in, some those that are still in school that are my my fan on YouTube. So how to do something that they too can afford. So it's also a bonus thing to the practicing engineers because that particular course is for both experienced and on uh, and, and students. So you have a, you, you must have something to learn in that package because I I I I I, I, I made it very rich package okay very rich and educative so let's offset this member okay so before we offset the member i need to know the properties of uh, those uh, those beams so for 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 the cantilever the cantilever is 300 okay and for the beam the beam is 400 so i need to offset this beam in such a way that um it's going to be on top of this uh, this beam okay we're going to be on top of that beam okay so okay let's do the member of set i'll come to specification click on beam the offset so let's do the start it's going to go in, in y direction positive y direction so let me do 0.34 that is uh, as 340. Let me move the number as 340 upwards. Okay, then I will do the first one is for starts, this one is for end. The same 0 0.34. Okay, then let me assign to so this. Sign to it. And sign it in. Start and end position. So let's look at uh, the three D. Let's see what we have done. The offset must be in such a way that the the member will still have a we still maintain contact with what is uh, supporting it so if you look at it very well you see that we still have uh, we still have contacts with what is being supported but i can still go and reduce it maybe do 330 i can still do that 330 so that uh, it will come down a bit well this one is still good it's still very okay well, let me go and uh, make it 330. Okay, 330 instead of 340. That's 330. Change it. This one. The same thing. Change. So I can now apply this to, um, to others. So let me select. Uh, let me select my properties so that I can I only select the that beam. Okay. 
Okay, now select everything. This is it. Okay, then I'll close. I'll find this to select it. Okay, then click on that. Assign this one to. Oh, let's see. Let's see what we have there. Okay, so if you look at it now, our run the runway beam is uh, has actually taken shape. Okay, so this is it. So it's supposed to be on this on this uh, um on the cantilever. The cantilever is what is carrying it. Okay, having done that, the next one for this class, this class is getting along already, is to do um moment releases for this my for my my uh, um pole lines. Yeah, I need to do it for my pole lines, and then uh, I will also do it for. They just pull lines, yes, they just pull lines. Okay, so I also do member offsets for for these pull lines, but let's first of all do the moment releases and we do the member offsets. It's okay, so it's still here, beams, then we go to uh, beam release, start. So yeah, I'm, I'm releasing MC, I'm releasing MC. Yes, and also go back again do it for the end part release MZ as well. So this is the thing. So I'll go to go back to geometry. Okay, so I'll select um all the points. Let me do the selecting by proxy. Okay. As pulling, but I have to unselect the the cantilever part of the pulling because I'm not supposed to release any. I'm not supposed to release those ones. I'm not releasing those ones. These ones are not supposed to have member releases. Okay. So then I'll go back to um, assign to selected, assign to selected. So this is it. So I can also do member offset for for them. Let me see my work so that uh, uh -huh. I will do member offset. Go back to beam property. This one is offset. Uh, is the offset with going in y direction for the start point? So what I'm going to have, we have the polling thickness as 80 mm, and it's sitting on on a, a rafter of of 140, and this on at the center of that rafter. Okay, so means. Okay, so from center to the top is about is seventy, and I will still have uh, forty um, mm still buried. So seventy plus um, let me see seventy plus twenty that's uh, seventy that's ninety. So let me do hundred. That's zero point one. Sorry, zero point one. Okay. In positive y, that's for starts. Then the end part, the same thing. The end part, the same thing, 0 0.1. So let me apply it on one first and see you know, what it looks like before I continue. So this is it. Um, 
is looking like one and did not uh, okay so let me check the three dimensional view okay so this helps you know make it makes our work look real so the plan is supposed to be on top of the, the rafter that is what we have here that's what we have here so even here the same thing sorry that's what we have here as well so i will now apply it to all okay so let me go back to specification so select um let me select the polines again polines good and i will assign and so assign that's wonderful so i think we're going to end this class here so let me uh, let's check the three-dimensional view okay the 3D model. this is what we have so you see our line is sitting on the rafters which is what is supposed to be sitting on the rafters why we still maintain the contact and the connection so this was supposed to be and our wrong way being is also on the cantilever that is supporting it so this is what it looks like so even when a layman looks at your model the doing design reviews they might ask you to show them the the model of the structure you know maybe if you are doing an in, in-house it's not in-house okay, yes in-house review with your clients and they want you so this one is not 3d model review the one that is being done with uh, with PDMS or PDMS, yes. So uh, that one is general 3D model review. This is only the PDMS model that they review and see all these things inside it. But uh, your counterparts can, can ask you to show the model you have done with Tattoo. So when you are showing this type of thing, the person understands it clear without asking you much questions you get. So without this member offset, it will really not look like you know like you know what you're doing but it's not that it is wrong not if you don't do member offset but you know to make the work easier for for the clients also for someone that is going to review your work you do member offset even though when you do member offset you might have so many warnings after your analysis but those warnings don't affect your output does affect your results so but i mean i like the member offsets so that even me will appreciate what i've done so look at what we have here now if you compare this uh, model to the one we we had last class i don't think you if, if you are if you are if you are given opportunity to choose one i don't think you are going to choose the last class one so we kept on modifying it until we get to this point and then we keep modifying until we finish it so next class we are going to do the cladding we are going to focus on the cladding and we will do all the member offset on the better angle rotation as uh, uh, wherever it is possible and at the back of uh, at, the, at the back of the warehouse we need to introduce some columns as well because this back has to be cladded as well so that will be our next class maybe after that we'll be done with modeling and we'll move into loading okay for those that have stayed to the end I'm, I'm going to give you a very important information. I'm going to have, I will, I will attach the, the start file of this work, you know, in the, in, in all, in all the videos we, about this warehouse when I'm done with the design. When I'm done with the design, I'll come back to all these videos. I'm going to edit them and include the link to access the start files. So if you know, if you, if you know you'll be needing the start file, just stay tuned. When we are done with this design the last day we'll do the design i'm going to attach the start file to all the videos we've posted before i'm going to edit all the videos and and uh, that i mean all the posts about the about this, this training i'm going to edit them 
and include the link to the start file there so stay tuned and if you are not still subscribed to my channel i, I will beg you to actually do the subscription i beg just do the subscription support me support me you are the reason why i'm here so give me a subscription and also a thumbs up then put up a comment just put up a comment even if you don't know what to say just tell me nice work it's fine i appreciate that thank you very much i also want to appreciate those that have also you know supported me by just uh, you know clicking the paying money you know some persons actually you know when they watch a video and they appreciate what they have seen they learn a lot they see what they appreciate what they have learned they just click that that thank you button there and you know give me some cash through that means i appreciate you for doing that thank you very much thank you very much for supporting me okay see you in our next class